Hey team, welcome back to The Basics. And today we're gonna to talk about the four fundamental firearm safety rules. Just before we get into the different training philosophies and get into the weeds with gear and things like that, it's really important to understand every time you handle a firearm, these are the things that you have to do in order to keep yourself safe. Depending on who you talk to, you'll find slight variations of these. Some people add to them, but generally everyone's gonna agree on these four. And if you practice these consistently, you're not gonna shoot yourself. You're not gonna injure somebody else. Your gun's not just gonna go off. Usually when, when people have accidents with firearms, they're breaking one, usually more than one of these two rules. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. The first firearm safety rule is to always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. Generally pointing it at the ground is a pretty safe bet. Exceptions to this are if you're in a house and you know there's people below you, you might point it up at the ceiling. Those bullets will travel through multiple walls and floors. So just keep in mind, not just pointing it at a wall where someone can be on the other side, but just think about a laser coming out of that barrel, where that bullet might go. So for me, I'm all alone in my house right now. I've got plenty of woods and other things around my house, but generally if I'm gonna clean it or something, I'll take the magazine out and just kind of point it out the back wall into the ground or something. Um, and I'll kind of use that as my safe area to point it as I'm looking at it, making sure it's clear. Um, if you're at the shooting range, generally that means pointing it at the ground and don't lift that muzzle above the berm because if you break one of the other rules and pull the trigger and send a round over the berm, it could potentially impact somebody else. So just try and keep it pointed down at the ground. The next firearm safety rule is the easiest to break. People, even veteran shooters break it all the time, but it's to keep your trigger finger outside the trigger guard and off the trigger until you're ready to consciously pull that trigger to fire. I usually like to just index it along the side here and then don't actually put it on the trigger until your sights are lined up and you're downrange ready to fire. Now again, most of these safety rules, you can break one and be okay, but if you break two, you're in deep trouble. So if you do break rule number two, as long as you're pointing it in a safe direction, you have a little bit of a backup. There's redundancies built into these rules. If you're not pointing it in a safe direction, but you keep your finger off the trigger, then again, the gun won't go off. So always make sure you're, you're abiding by each of these rules just in case something else happens that you're not thinking about or you, know, you flinch or you get bumped and your finger goes on the trigger. Just make sure you're double tapping these rules, I should say. The third safety rule, I have a slight variation, a uh, slight difference that I stole from Pat Mack. He's a famous shooting instructor. He's an ex-Delta Force guy. The standard rule, which you'll hear, is treat every gun as if it were loaded. But really what that helps you do is to not break rule number one or two. So if, if the gun's loaded in your mind, even if it's not, you're always gonna point it in a safe direction and you're not gonna put the finger on the trigger. What I like to, to do is what Pat Max suggests is always know the condition of your firearm, which means you always know whether it's loaded or unloaded. And what that does for me is, is it always makes sure that I'm double, triple checking, always making sure I know if there's a round in the chamber, I'm always checking my magazine to say, okay, am I loaded or am I not? And then that way, if I choose to, I can go to the range or in my house, do something what's called dry firing, where I'm actually getting reps where the gun's empty and I'm going ahead and pulling the trigger, pointing it in a safe direction. But that is something we'll talk about in the future that'll give us really good uh, accuracy training and just kind of getting used to your gun is a really great tool you can use. So know at all times what the condition of your gun is. Additionally, sometimes you want it to be loaded. So before you put it in your holster for concealed carry or put it on the nightstand, you want to check to make sure it is loaded sometimes. So that way you don't come out and present with an empty firearm and then you're in deep trouble. So the fourth rule is to always know what's in front of your target, what's behind it and what's to the sides. Now this is good for recreation or defensive shooting. Primarily for defensive shooting, you wanna make sure that you're actually hitting the target and you're not putting your rounds into like some cover or something else that you don't intend in front of the target. You wanna know what's behind the target in case you miss so you're not shooting something you don't want to. And then you also wanna have good situational awareness about what's going on to the sides, just in case if you're about to break that shot, somebody doesn't come sprinting in and take that round instead of the threat. Recreationally, it really means knowing what's behind your target. For me, that's the big one. Some people will just put up a target in the woods and they'll just start shooting shooting and a few hundred meters back or even half a mile or more back will be a camper and that person takes around. So always know where your bullets are going, what's going to stop it. And additionally, just having situational awareness to see if somebody's running around or doing something they're not supposed to at the range that you don't accidentally shoot them just because you're so laser focused on the target itself. A few other good to know safety rules are just to always wear your ear and eye protection. Make sure you're putting the proper ammunition in the gun. 
And then probably the biggest thing for me is to always store your weapons properly. So we have been having issues with kids finding guns laying around at home and either accidentally shooting themselves or intentionally committing suicide or just people who aren't allowed to have guns, people who might have legal issues um, who aren't old enough yet, they're just getting access to guns when they shouldn't. So make sure you have at least some sort of container that you can secure those firearms in. If nothing else, every gun should come with a little cable that you lock, put through the action, and then you lock it. So at least if someone does get access to the firearm, they can't use it. Those are the main rules, guys. And again, we'll talk about best practices and some other safety tips as we move forward, but you really should have these memorized and practiced in every single time you handle a firearm.